Hey guys, welcome back to AGTV. Today I wanted to make a kind of no nonsense comparison between these two batteries right here that both claim to work very well in cold weather climates. On my left, we have the Bluetti Pioneer NA. This is a brand new sodium ion technology. I believe this is potentially the first of its kind in the consumer level of battery package with that sodium technology. Really great battery. And then on my right here, I have the Pcron E1000 LFP. I think there may be some other heated batteries out there, but this one essentially takes the lithium iron phosphate battery that we're all familiar with that you cannot charge below 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius. And it has heating elements inside that when it gets to that temperature, and when you start to recharge it, it will apply some of that energy to reheating the batteries before it begins its recharge cycle. So I spent all of this week freezing and testing and refreezing these batteries to try to answer a question that I feel like everybody is asking about these two different batteries right now. Is one better than the other? And the results were actually very surprising. Before I get in the results, I do want to tell you exactly how I ran my tests because I want you guys to be able to either recreate these results on your own or imagine your scenario where you might have a similar situation. And so the way the tests work was every night I would put the power station in the freezer at the end of testing. So for example, night one, Sunday night, I put these power stations both in the freezer side by side. My deep freezer is set to minus 10 degrees Fahrenheit so these batteries are somewhere in that range by the time I pull them out then the next day after work so the afternoon not exactly 24 hours but maybe about 18 to 20 hours later I would pull them out conduct my test and then immediately put them back in the freezer so that I could rinse and repeat and do the same thing the next day and the first big test that I conducted was essentially what we call a battery capacity rundown test so I took both batteries from a frozen state of charge completely frozen solid I hooked them up to these electric pans that I really love to use when I'm out camping and I let them run for the duration of the battery capacity and that result surprised me as I said every result result that I got throughout my testing completely surprised me and made my decision at the end very difficult to make. And for this test, something very important to know is that the Bluetti Pioneer NA is rated at 900 watt hours of internal energy and the Pcron E1000 LFP is rated at 1024 watt hours of internal capacity. So there is about a 10% difference, actually a little more than a 10% difference between the rated energy outputs of these two batteries, making that end result of about 760 watt hours from both of these batteries very surprising now i've said surprising three times i've got to stop saying that word but that really is the theme of this video or the results for all of my tests i am a little boggled because i had heard that this one would lose about 20 percent of its power in a frozen state and that did coincide with my previous test that i did in my full review of this video where i got 830 watt hours returned which was a very significant number from that one. However, interestingly, from the Pcron E1000 LFP, the difference wasn't as great as it was from the warm battery capacity test that I conducted a few months back. So given those capacity specifications and the test results, for that cold weather runtime, there's essentially no true real world difference in the capacity between this 900 watt hour battery and this 1024 watt hour battery. And in fact, if you take those results and extrapolate them back out to the warm, the warm condition test results, it's essentially the same. This 900 watt hour battery produces results similar to these 1000 watt hour lithium iron phosphate batteries. And I would say plus or minus about 5%, you could take that result and compare it to almost any of the 1000 watt hour batteries that are out there on the market today. EcoFlow, other Blue Eddies that are already out there that are LFP batteries. 
uh, and all of those other brands that are out there. So the next test is where I again got another surprising result and that is I deep froze again all of the batteries, completely frozen state of charge. At this point, I believe they probably got down to somewhere around minus 10 degrees Fahrenheit, which is super cold. I'll put the, the Celsius conversion on the screen. But then my only goal there was to pull them out, plug them in, and time exactly how long did it take to go from that frozen solid state to a 100% state of charge. And this is where I learned kind of the first surprising fact about these cold proof sodium batteries. Cold proof, of course, does have a limit. And so in the case of the Bluetti Pioneer, it will not charge if its internal temperature is below minus five degrees Fahrenheit. And the reason that's important is for this test in particular, the Picron with its self-heating technology immediately went to work with self-heating and within about 30 or 40 minutes, it rose itself enough to a temperature that it began to start charging. Surprisingly, the Blue Eddy sodium also rose itself to a temperature that it started to charge. So they both started to charge plus or minus about 10 minutes around the same time. I will have those results on the screen. And then the other super surprising thing was the Bluetti Pioneer NA did have a very throttled or lower charge capability throughout the duration of that frozen charge test, whereas the Picron did continue to warm itself up. And once it got to a fully warmed up state of charge, it began to charge at its maximum capacity. So it's very weird to watch this process where in the long run, the E1000 LFP did end up charging faster than the Bluetti Pioneer. Year. Now for those results, there are a few other things I need to share with you. I did fully recharge and discharge these down to a 20% state of charge before beginning that recharge test. I wanted to try to have it kind of at a real world state of charge that you might experience outdoors. And the interesting thing was when I pulled them out, <coughs> excuse me, and started that recharge test, the Picron displayed 0% state of charge on its display. The Blue Eddy, of course, started at its 20%. As they began to recharge, the Picron only went up to 1%. And even though it did top off and eventually start, so the, the BMS and all that stuff was working, the shunt never displayed more than 1% state of charge. The Blue Eddy did, of course, go to 100%, and then shortly thereafter, it stopped recharging. So then for my remainder of tests, the display on this Picron didn't really work out the way that you would expect where it would show 100% or 0%. And I have seen this with LFP batteries before where it will essentially tell itself it's at 100% so that it won't charge. That's how the BMS manages that, that frozen state to prevent itself from charging while it's frozen, which can significantly damage these batteries. So the system is working, but you just won't know accurately what your battery percentage is. And so that brings me to the final and potentially most important comparison of, of this project that I've worked on, and that is price. So really right now, almost any LFP battery, so lithium iron phosphate battery, that you can get with similar features and similar specs is around 400 bucks. So they might, you know, have some deals where they go a little lower or they might have some features that make them a little higher, but around $400. On the other hand, this Blue Eddy Pioneer comes in right now at $1,000, so $999. There's currently a, a deal where you can get it for $799. I also have a coupon code actually for both of these in my description where you can get a small additional maybe five or so percent discount but the question there is is the sodium battery is the benefit of the sodium battery worth almost twice as much as a heated lithium iron phosphate battery that essentially offers almost the same capability. And I did mention that you can get almost any of these lithium batteries for around 400 bucks, but not many of them have this heated function. I think this Picron is the only one in this size that does have a heated capability. Bluetti makes the uh, B300S, that's an AC500 B300S 
combination, which is massive. So it's like a 3000 watt hour battery. It has a heating element inside. And I have actually had one of those for several years with zero problems, but for this small form factor that you might be considering for overland camping or minivan camping, something like that. I believe this is the only one in this size that is heated. I do hope that EcoFlow and Blue Eddy do come out with some more heated options. And in fact, I've been researching heating pads to see if I can add some heating pads to some of these batteries. And heating pads are not very expensive, which makes me wonder why they have not already included these anyway, maybe for an additional five to $10 of manufacturing cost. Almost any of these batteries could just be heated. And in fact, the sodium battery could be heated as well, and then they could really make it cold proof. Right now I would call it cold resistant, up to minus five degrees Fahrenheit, but there may be some conditions where you get below five degrees Fahrenheit and you'd be surprised to find that this thing doesn't recharge at that state. And in fact, it doesn't operate at all below minus 13 degrees Fahrenheit. So Bluetti did an excellent job of displaying proof of concept with this Pioneer NA. Uh, my only true wish other than the heated capability was that they would have used the box and i'm sure they didn't want to encroach on the sales of like the elite 100 v2 is i wish they would have used that chassis for the design and included those heated pads and that right there could have made this the perfect or the ultimate overlanding battery so i'm looking forward to seeing what they come up with and in the meantime I don't know guys, let me know in the comments which of these two would be worth your hard-earned money, which one provides you the best bang for your buck.